Hi, in this video, I'm going to teach you how to create a lambda function in Excel step by step. Today, what we're going to create is a scalar function in the sense this function throws us only one output and the function we're going to create is product f. Some of you may know that in Excel, we have some f's, but we don't have product f. Now, firstly, we'll see a use case for product f and we'll understand the underlying logic then we'll talk about how do we make it into a reusable logic using the lambda. So let's get started. So what I have with me is bonus history of a company. So what we have here is the various dates on which the bonus was declared and what happened to our share count. So if you had one share, let's say before 13 July 2014, that became two on 13 July 2014. And this two became six on 15th October 16 then again the 6 got multiplied by 2 on 18 January 19 and on 15 September 21 it again got multiplied into 2 so we essentially would be having 24 shares now if you wanted to get a product of all these numbers in one go rather than iteratively like what we got what we could have done is simply use a product function and select all the values we got 24 but here is a challenge for us. If the date of purchase was not 15th September 2013, and let's say it was 15th September 2015, in that case, when we take a product, we cannot take the bonus that were issued prior to 15th September 2015, which means I have to leave out the first item and I should only take product of the other three. And that comes out to be 12. Now, how do we achieve this in Excel? We are going to do it in two steps. In the first step, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to filter for all these values, provided the dates are greater than 2015. So if you have Office 365, you could use a filter function here, filter for this multiplier, comma, where the date is greater than the date of purchase. So I get three, two and two. Now, what if our date of purchase was not 15 September 15, it was 15 October 2021. In that case, there is not a single value here. So if you bought after 15 September 2021, if you had bought one share, that will still be one. So what you can do is in the filter function, I'm going to pass on the argument saying, what if it's empty? So I want one here. So now we have the filter function. So which filters for the data point that we have? We'll now wrap up this filter function inside a product function. So equals product. So because the filter function only takes us the value that we need, the product function is only going to product them and we get the answer we want. So here is the formula I used in this cell, which we have got here. Now this logic was slightly complicated. Of course, we may create far more complicated functions in Microsoft Excel but this logic itself is somewhat complicated and what we may now want to do is make this logic reusable without having to take all the efforts that we just took right now and that is where lambda function comes into picture so when you're creating a lambda function we are going to define this logic at a somewhat abstract level and then we would be able to reuse it so how do we create this firstly before we create a lambda function, we have to understand what are the parameters that we have to accept as input from the end user. Let's look at this here. What are the parameters we need? We are using the product function and filter function, but the argument or the parameter we passed was two. One was the set of multipliers and the other was the condition where we gave a condition that the date should be greater than date of purchase. So in the Lambda function, we are going to specify the parameters that the end user is going to pass. So we are not going to actually select the range. We are only going to create a placeholder for them here. So I'm going to call them by a name. I'm going to define a variable name here. You can give it any name. You can give X, Y, A, B. I'm calling it as RNG for range and condition. This is the name I'm giving. So people are going to pass you two parameters range and condition what do you do with these two parameters we need to take a product of 
let's look at the formula that we've created earlier i'm going to replicate almost the same thing of filter of which range that range we are not specifying now we are saying that range is something that the user will pass so it's going to be rng this name has to match the user is going to give you a range and that range is what you have to use the name has to match inside your lambda function if the name doesn't match here then it won't work and the user will also give you a condition so take that condition and if the no data satisfies the condition i need one close the bracket for filter function close the bracket for product and close the bracket for lambda now lambda function is not meant to work inside a cell directly right so when i press enter it's going to give a calc error saying that it can't do the calculation now what we have to do is we have to store it in a name but before we store it in a name you may want to test out whether this lambda will work correctly or not so what we can do is after you give the lambda function pass on these arguments that will have to go inside the lambda function so the multipliers will have to go here comma and the dates greater than my date of purchase this argument will also go here specify these two things press enter and see whether you get the answer seems to be working let's try changing it out it works so that means now we are happy with the lambda function so what we are going to do is let me remove this additional data that i just entered the parameters i passed i'll copy this lambda i'll go to formulas name manager click on new here i am going to give the name of the function that i will be using so it's going to be product if and after giving this i will probably i can type the lambda function but i'll just copy paste it here so this is going to be there in the name manager i'll click okay so we have the function created now how can we reuse it so i'm going to use a function here called as equals product if this is a function we just created right now i get the prompt that i need to give the range and condition so here is the range and here is the condition that check whether this is greater than 15th october 2013 close the bracket press enter and i've got the answer so hope you learned how to create a function with lambda today we learned about a simple scalar function in another video we will learn how to create a vector function with lambda which can throw multiple outputs in one go see you next time until then take care bye bye